Hello everyone, I'm the Anthapple, and today we are going to be taking a look at Vault 87. One of the only vaults within Fallout 3 that actually requires you to go for the plot. This vault is located within the Lamplight, but first of all you're going to have to go through here, Murder Pass. I expect that you have to be heavily armed and high leveled as there are a large amount of super mutants and super mutant brutes and masters within this area. As you progress further on, you'll eventually come to this the reactor door. This will lead you into the vault proper. Now, when you've entered this, you'll have to progress once again through some slight catacomb areas before you actually walk up into the primary area. To be honest, it looks like someone took a KFC chicken bucket and just left it lying around, but it was humans instead of chicken. There's bones everywhere, there's bodies, there's a teddy bear, and what I'm pretty sure is some children's bones, which is kind of creepy. Now, if you go back to the start and you progress to the left, you can go down and then you can come to this area here. Within this area, you can find this Peter Stevens personal journals, which show the mourning of a father descending into insanity because he's lost his son. So his son Jason's gone, his wife isn't talking, and he doesn't want to die inside the vault. He would like to die in the open air, in the sunlight. Now, some of these are corrupted, so we'll not be able to read them all. The last one, or the second last one, sorry. They say he needs pills. He says he's not crazy. He says he's hearing voices of children, and he doesn't know why he's alive. The last one is just a descent into madness with repeated text, even though it does make sense. There are no spaces, so it can be resumed at the end. He did descend into some type of psychotic episode. The whether it was because of the vault, we don't know. This door, I will show you how to open this at the end of the video. Now, progressing back to the main part, you will see bodies littered everywhere, blood stains. Super mutants, you're gonna have to go through all these to actually get to the main parts of the vault, and this is heavily guarded, so be sure you are well equipped. Progressing to the actual living quarters, you can find the vault is in an area of disarray, but not disuse. Super mutants were using this vault, so there will be tables, there will be things put out, there will be some meals prepared, though this is more eerie for us because these meals prepared, as you will see here, and further on, are people. The ceilings collapsed and gore bags hang from it, and none of the rooms are occupied at all. Oddly enough, in one of the rooms, one of the projectors is still running. Though whether this is just because of a bug or good vault tech engineering, we don't know, as projectors do run in some of the other vaults. Hanging from the ceiling, as you can see here, are gore bags. And if we progress into this clinic across the way, you can see how the super mutants may have actually prepared some of their meals. A cut up body in a table gibbed, sliced, mashed apart. This was probably how they prepared people before eating them and consuming them. After you progress upstairs, you can find a room that you can enter. A chair with blood stains, meaning somebody could have been held in it. And then this, the upper part of the vault. There you can either go up or you can go down. We will be going down here, but keep in mind there are several super mutant masters down here guarding this part. After you've gotten rid of them and blown them apart, you can find several things. You can find a shelf with some knickknacks on it. You can find a bed. You can find more body parts. And you can find a locker with recon armor, which may be useful to you. You have a safe, which when you open, you can obtain a Scout Magnum, a very useful weapon, and some well-needed stim packs and ammunition. To the left is a terminal from an engineer in the vault, which shows just how aware some people may or may not have been of what was going on in the vault. So first of all, he's talking about how the water dispenser isn't working. It's a weird taste. This was most likely the chemicals or the FEV being pumped into the system for exposure to people at the end. Here, he talks about spikes in the reactor's power, what it's drawing from the grid. It then becomes apparent that it's the research division of this vault that's drawing all this power, though he doesn't actually know what they do there. So he's saying that they're going to have to use a backup reactor kick in when they need it. The third one is about yeah, radiation leaks from the GEC chamber. Now the GEC is what you've actually come to get from this vault. They're saying that vault Tech did not properly reinforce this. This was actually the point of this vault. The FEV and radiation leaks were not properly contained. This is some crap about tapioca pudding I believe turning orange, which may or may not mean something I don't think it does, but you know, make of that what you will. 
Then they're going someone to the overseer's office, and you can hear many, you can see, sorry, many edited entries. I don't actually know what they say, but it can be presumed that it had something of significance to do with the radiation leaks, the weird tastes, and him questioning what the purpose of all this was actually. The last one is saying that he doesn't want to die in here, that they're doing something called EEP. His wife was diagnosed with an unknown illness and they wouldn't identify it, which we will see more of later, and that he's stored some ammunition in the vault and the safe to the right, and that he hopes if you're reading this, you can get out and save yourself, which is what you're going to have to do eventually when you leave this vault. But it really shows that everybody did not know what was going on in here. Most likely the researchers and the overseer were the only ones. Then you can progress upwards, closer and closer towards your goal, the Gek, what you came here for. You can find a room with blood spattered handprints on the window, showing someone may have been trying to escape and based on what you can see here, they didn't. You can then find a terminal, dictating the medical records. Now, the first thing it will show you is this. All employees must read. Anyone with this type of illness, it's going to be classified as um, unknown or UD000. It's unexplained death. Now, this doesn't mean anything until we see just how many people have died of this. 93 people have died. Of that, 83 of them, or 87, sorry, were UD000, an unidentified death. Now, this starts us to maybe inkle in our minds. Why is this the case? Why is this particular illness killing everyone? And why is it being identified as unknown? Why are there so few illnesses or deaths from other th symptoms? Well, you're going to see in the f other medical records here. Why? So it shows you just what these mean, just what all these combinations. So natural deaths begin with an N. Accidental get, uh, deaths begin with an A. And other unexplained or unidentified. Now keep in mind, 93 deaths, almost all of them, as you can see here, which were 87, were un unidentified or unexplained, which shows that they were definitely hiding something from the inhabitants and people of this vault. Unfortunately, I already emptied this safe. That was my bad. You can then progress, progress around once more. You can go down, which doesn't really lead anywhere, or you can go up, closer and closer to your goal, the Gek, the purpose you came to this vault for. As you can see, there's a spatula here, and some more bodies showing that the super mutants really would eat people whenever and wherever they wanted. Now here we get to one of the most suspicious parts of the vault, the corpses. Checking the terminals, the test chambers, You'll see that the chamber status is offline, but all the FEV reserves of the forced evolutionary virus are empty. These are the early generation super mutants, people who were exposed to the FEV and radiation, warped, mangled, and mutated beyond anything that can be called human or functioning. High upper body, very small lower body, small legs, warped limbs, gangrenous limbs, many bulbous growths out their back, a broken foot or a malformed foot, small arms, and based on their face they died in a lot of pain. It can also be seen that their clothes may have actually grown or merged or fused with their flesh, which would say that they were in extreme amounts of pain. Some of them have actually managed to either escape or been knocked over, we don't really know. All we know is that they were exposed to the virus. And this is what it turned them into, these monstrosities, which can't even be called super mutants. A little further on, you can actually get to the chief physician's uh, medical room and get access to his terminal. So first of all, he's saying the, late, the evolutionary experimentation program. People who are being exposed to it. Now, Mary Post said that's very important. That's where Harold, the talking tree in Oasis, he was exposed to FEV there, and that caused the tree that was in his head to merge with him and him to grow into what you see in Oasis. You can look at that video if you want any more details. So first of all, it's showing the female bodies are going under, undergoing severe physical change and becoming asexual. Similarly, 
the male ones are also becoming asexual. Now that's very important, as it's always been sort of wondered how the super mutants actually reproduce. They don't. Then minor setbacks. Someone died. The brains become too underdeveloped to support even basic functions, eating, sleeping, survival instincts that even someone with brain damage can support. Now, then they're saying that their skin is actually hardening, becoming bulletproof, which would actually explain the increased strength, resistance, and defense of super mutants that you would encounter throughout the waste. The last entry you can hear, they're becoming very, very angry, rage, and they're going to have to kill them. This can be consumed, this is the only the early the stage um, super mutants as the other ones where they were anger, uh, angry, sorry, where they were able to control it. You can then find Marcus inside here, along with the centaur. Now, we don't know if this was the exposure of people in the experimentation or the super mutants when they were exposing people. I would assume the latter, because it gives no details or reference to centaurs at all within the terminals. And they will be located in all of these rooms, so be wary of that. You can also find some people who were probably going to be either eaten or exposed to the FEV. Why? We'll come to that later. You can get inside this room here with some super mutant masters and brutes, so be careful of that. And open all these doors. This is how you're actually going to go about releasing Marcus unless you want to hack the hard terminal. Of course, in my opinion, this is probably the easier course because you can kill things, get experience, and it avoids hacking, which is quite annoying sometimes. Progressing further up the vault, you finally come closer to your goal, the Gek. This is the floor that it's located on. It will be heavily defended, so you better be prepared to fight for it, as the Super Mutants, while they don't seem to know what it really is, they don't want to let anyone else near it. So first of all, you can get this, the Advanced Radiation Suit, which, if you haven't freed Marcus, will be key in getting to the Gek. You will not be able to survive the radiation without it. You can then come to this terminal here, now, there's a couple entries in this terminal. One of them will actually detail about the advanced radiation suit, and one of them will allow you to unlock the door instead of having to pick it. Now, the first one says that all storages have been given advanced radiation suits. The second entry, however, is more interesting. It's talking about the radiation leaks that are coming out of the gek room. So, the same explosion, expulsion of radiation from the ducts. This was, in fact, intentional by vault -Tec. They did not want this place to be secure. They wanted the radiation to escape. They wanted the FEV to be exposed to everybody. Also, the latest test subjects are going to be destroyed. That was the ones that we've seen about in the um, physician's terminal. At this point, you have to question whether the actual um, employees here or anybody, even the overseer, knew what was going on because they were all exposed. The radiation, FEV, all of it. So eventually, you'll come to here, very close to the actual gag this area right here. Now, you can either get Marcus to go in for you, or you can equip the advanced radiation suit, a lot of radix, right away, and get in there yourself, because the radiation per second does go up into the triple digits, and it will annihilate you. You will not be able to survive. I would recommend just getting Marcus, because, you know, radix and right away aren't exactly very common materials. They are kind of hard to get. Well, not hard, but... They aren't very frequent. Don't step in the green puddles. They're when you get the three digit uh, spikes in radiation. Okay, avoid them. You can also view where Marcus will be going from the windows around you. Eventually, however, you will come to the Gek Room. But before that, you're probably going to have to use a lot of Rad Away and Rad X to reduce the amount of radiation poisoning so you don't die on your way there. When you eventually come to it, Unfortunately, I'd already got it by this point, but it will be on this table here. And you can just pick it up and then leave the way you came. This is the door. This is inside little lamplight inside the great chamber. Unfortunately, there's no part of this terminal. I'll let you figure out how you're going to go about that. But this will let you circumvent the entire murder pass and avoid them and get into the uh, vault proper. This is vault 87 out in the waste. As you can see, there was a sign here even back then, saying very high amounts of radiation, suggesting this may have been a testing ground even before the vault was made. 
As you can see, I'll be using a lot of Radaway, Radex, and a radiation suit right here to try to survive this radiation to get to the main entrance of the vault. Just watch. Right here, up to the 200s, 300s. The 500s. You cannot get down here, or at least I have found no way, even without cheats, it's just not possible. So that is Vault 87, a vault where the um, FEV, Forced Evolutionary Virus, was being experimented on. People were exposed to radiation, and the super mutants bring people there to make more super mutants. They are asexual, they need the vault's radiation, and the FEV, though we couldn't find any, any of it within the vault, do that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. It does shed quite a bit of light in the Super Mutants. If you did, please leave a like. If you haven't, why not subscribe and go watch some of my more content. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, leave it in the comments section below. And, as always, I hope I will see you in the next episode. And, goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. If you haven't done so already, why don't you subscribe so you can get regular updates to all my content. If you want to, follow me on Twitter, where you can talk to me, ask me any questions you want, and also get any updates that I have on my channel. As you can see, I have linked a video above that I think you will also like that I have made. Please go watch it if you're so inclined to do so. And as always, I hope you will stick around for the next video, and goodbye.